As you can imagine, Pope Francis has a very busy schedule while he's in Washington. He'll arrive at Joint Base Andrews tomorrow afternoon and on Wednesday he'll meet with President Obama in the morning and then hold a mass in the afternoon. On Thursday, the pontiff will meet with Congress before heading to New York City. The global leader of 1.2 billion Catholics doesn't visit the United States often, but the papal visit this week will be unlike any in the past and will most certainly be history making. I consider our guest this evening to be one of the leading authorities locally on the Catholic Church. From a journalistic perspective, Justin Catnozzo is the director of journalism at Wake Forest University. He's traveled extensively in Italy and has written extensively about the church. Welcome. So glad to have you. I'm glad evening. to be here, Neil. When you and I talked on the phone earlier this morning, yeah. you must have said three or four times, this visit is so really important. important. Yeah. Why and why should we pay attention well, to it? Well, the reason to pay attention to it is look, this is his first visit ever to the United States. So this yeah. is a world traveler who's never been to like one of the most important countries on earth. And he's here for three reasons. He is the first pope who's gonna to speak to a joint session of Congress. True. That's huge. When he goes to New York, he's also gonna be speaking to the UN. He's gonna be delivering messages about the poor, about climate, about immigration, all big issues here. In Philly, it's all about rallying Catholics because Catholics are fleeing the church in this country. Yeah. The Pope in Cuba today, how truly influential was the Pope in our country's reestablishment of relations with Cuba? You know, I, that's not a story I'm covering, but yeah. I can say that in the absence of this Pope, probably we are not having this thaw right now. Pope Francis really feels like he is stepping into a leadership vacuum globally. That's why he's getting involved in these issues. He sees that we're going nowhere on climate change, that the leaders of the largest countries in the world are not doing what they need to do to reduce carbon emissions. He's stepping into that vacuum. He yeah. wants to be a leader. Uh, speaking of that, the Pope has taken a more liberal stance on many issues, especially in the environment and global warming. And earlier this summer, he came out with a writ or an, an encyclical. You've got a copy of it right here, a teaching document, yes, it is. Uh, if you will. I got that at the Vatican. Uh, where, uh, where he's, oh, I feel important. It, where he says, we got to take better care of our planet, the environment, especially yeah. when it comes to the poor. This led to your getting a grant from the Pulitzer Center on crisis reporting yeah. to go and report from the Central American. American country of Peru. Yep. That's really a hotbed of the global is, warming yeah. uh, issue regarding the Pope. Why Peru and why is that? Peru so? to me is, is sort of ground zero for the battle against climate change. Now for one reason, um, last December they hosted the UN Climate Summit. 196 nations are there. We're looking at some of the pictures you took in Peru. Too. Yeah, so this is a farming region in, in, in southern Peru where they're threatening to uh, put a copper mine there that will completely wipe out all that farming. 15,000 farms. So a lot pounds. of environmental issues. There are. So here's Peru. Peru is rich in, in natural resources gold, silver, copper, zinc, but they've got the most biodiverse uh, Amazon jungle on earth. They have constant, constant, constant conflict between business development and the environment. And a very poor population. A lot of miners, like what we see Absolutely. here in this picture. Absolutely. The thing is, they are a lot less poor today than they were 15 years ago because of the growth of the mining industry. Yeah. And that's a real conflict too. So you've got the environmentalists yes. uh, going up against the capitalist in Absolutely. that country. How might what is happening in Peru uh, impact how the Pope is perceived ah, here in the yeah. United so, States? I mean, I thought about this the whole time. I spent three weeks in Peru this summer. This is a country where this guy enjoys 80% approval ratings. Three out of four people in Peru are Catholic. Yeah. You would expect that they would take this document and embrace it. Yeah. They don't. Right. When I talk to the poor in Peru, basically they say, we love the Pope, but mind your own business, man. Right. We need jobs. If he is having a hard time getting traction with the encyclical in Peru, imagine the hard time he's going to have in the United States, in yeah. West Virginia, in North Dakota with fracking, West Virginia with coal mining. Yeah. It's going to be a tough sell. It's going to be interesting to see what he says before a joint session of Congress Absolutely. this week on this topic. Absolutely. Justin, unfortunately, we're out of time. Hope you can come back sometime. We'll talk come more. Come back anytime. Great. Again, great to see you. Thank great you. Great to see you, too. All right, band. <laughs>